Morning. The following video contains some gruesome imagery. Uh, head blowing up. Um, some other bits and bobs as well. Like some chaps' faces go a bit stupid. They go all weird and that. But it ain't that bad, you know. I'm quite squeamish. Now we're all right with it. But I'll just don't pop the warning in. Uh, no loo themes, in case you were hoping for that. But no. Hey, up, Ravers. Can't remember exactly who requested this film. Somebody popped a comment on YouTube a while back, I think. But, uh, yeah, anyway, got some science fiction for you today with Scanners. <laughs> yes, it's Scanners. And it opens with a shifty-looking bloke. Looks a bit of a tramp. Helping his send to leftover food and stuff off folks' plates and that. And he overhears these snooty women slagging him off. I've never seen anything so disgusting all my life. So in retribution, he inflicts some sort of telepathic mind probe, causing the snooty of the two women to have some sort of seizure. Now, I must say, the first thing that struck me was some very questionable first aid practice from these bystanders. Admittedly, I ain't done a first aid refresher for a few years, because, you know, I'm retired now. But I remember distinctly being taught that you shouldn't owe them, you shouldn't restrain them, or put stuff in the gob. Well, what's he putting a glove in a gob for? Yeah, you might do more harm than good. Yeah, very poor, very poor. They need to book the sends on to a St John's course, pronto, them lot. Yeah, learn from the best with St John's. Always dependable in an emergency, ain't they? St John's ambulance. See him holding himself there. Oh dear! Nick Britton, the promoter. <laughs> oh, sorry, this is uh, one shouldn't laugh. The poor lad uh, took a nasty knock there, but this is uh, a bit like the Keystone Cops down there. Yeah. And he rode two equally shifty-looking blokes in raincoats. Spot this champ and promptly start chasing him round an Arndale centre, before shooting him with a tranquiliser and grabbing him. And around, the tramp wakes up and finds his son strapped to hospital bed in some sort of mysterious empty room. And Patrick McGowan turns up and starts feeling up his trouser legs. Now, he's always very sinister, Patrick McGoogley, but the feeling up his trouser legs, that made him a little bit more sinister, in my opinion. Just came across a little bit weird. But he's there to impart some important information to the champ. You're a scanner, which you don't realise. And we, the audience, don't realise at the moment. We don't know what scanners are yet, although my guess would be... Uh, telekinetic and kinetic sort of folk, you know, who can read minds and make folk have mind seizures and stuff like that. And sure enough, that seems to be the case, because McGoogler brings in an audience of folk who stream in to watch this poor chap strapped to his hospital bed. And none of them are saying out, but he can hear them all, they're all thinking. Obviously it's doing his nutting, you know, he can't get rid of these voices in his head until McGoogler sedates him. Not sure what we're in it for the audience here. It's not the most thrilling show, watching a man rise around on a hospital bed, but, uh, yeah, they seem into it. Oh, just rewind that. Look at that, crikey, what a terrible wig that is. That is appalling. Just embrace boldness, mate, like I do. God, it looks a right pellet, doesn't it? And anyway, we then go to this sort of conference type thingy, where this chap says he's going to demonstrate his telekinesis powers. And he gets what appears to be a reluctant volunteer out of the audience and proceeds with his demonstration. And you know something bad's going to happen here. You know something bad's going to happen. He's looking very perturbed. Whereas this other chap, well, I'll be honest, he looks like he's playing pocket billions. But, uh, yeah. But sure enough, something bad does happen. Oh, yeah, horrible. I were having a brew and a bicky when I watched this. And I nearly choked on my brew. We weren't expecting that. Now, the police arrest this chap. Obviously, now he's a wrong one. But you see him using his telekinetic powers. And they all end up killing the sense. And he walks off scot-free. Obviously, the villain of the piece, this fella. Proper evil turd. Now, it transpires that this chap is a scanner called Daryl Revok. 
it was turned into a nutcase because of not being able to get the voices out of his head. And this Daryl Revick apparently has some sort of underground ring of scanners who do dodgy stuff. Can't remember exactly what. Uh, ain't integral to a plot, to be honest with you. They're just baddies. The baddies. Now, McGoogly recruits the tramp scanner, Cameron Vale, to infiltrate Revick's crew. Because this Vale bloke is obviously brilliant at all the telekinetic scanning stuff. He does all, he's great at the scanning. Does it all great. It was easy. And so the scene is set for the film. You've got Revick, the baddie scanner, versus Vale, the good scanner. Uh, we don't know what McGoogle is doing yet. You know, he's sinister. He's presumably going to turn out to be a baddie or something. Because he works for this shady organisation, CONSEC. There was some private company who produced arms for the military and that. And they want to use the scanners for defence purposes, probably for evil. I mean, that's where all these things end up being used for in the end, don't they? Now, you get a bit of action with the baddies trying to chase down the good guys and the good guys trying to chase down the baddies. But what I don't get is how they're always continually underestimating the scanners. They always seem surprised when the scanners use their mind powers on them and do all the telecanoodling and all that stuff. It always ends badly for the non-scanners. They're rubbish. Now, it ain't just folks' minds what the scanners can control. No, they can seemingly control inanimate objects and all. And at one point, we see Cameron Vale doing some scanning into a computer programme. Didn't really understand what was going on here, but he's controlling it somehow. And the baddies twig onto that. It's Vale. He's inside. Is that possible? Of course it's not bloody possible. But, you know, you've got to go with it, ain't you? So they program it to send a struct to try and kill Cameron Vale. But it don't work, and he blows them up. It's all a bit stupid, to be honest with you. Plus, is that a string you can see? Can you see that bloke being pulled by a string there? Certainly looks like he's dangling from a string. But as I say, I didn't really understand what was going on there. And I did initially find myself going, oh, that's stupid, isn't it? And then I remembered what I was watching. Because let's be honest, if you got this far into the film and you're picking up on this being stupid, then you're watching the wrong film, ain't you? Because telecanoodlers, they can do all sorts of stuff, can't they? Who can forget Yuri Geller bending his spoons? Have you ever tried that? Yeah, any time Yuri Geller was on the telly, everybody would be trying the spoon bending the next day, wouldn't they? Are we give it a go. And it did work. We managed to bend a spoon. And then we realised it was because it was some shitty cutlery from the mother-in-law. Now, there's some pretty ropey acting in this, I've got to say. The bloke who plays Cameron Vale, he's a plank. He really is wood in this chat. Dr. Ruth was a great man. He tried to help us. He helped me. Although the bad is good. Mark Lionside is good. You've seen him in other stuff as a baddie. Uh, yeah, he's just good value, that bloke. But the biggest name actor, McGoogly, he's wasted. I thought he was going to be a baddie, but he doesn't turn out to be a baddie. And they bump him off early. What a waste. I thought he was going to be there at the, the crescendo, you know, at the climax at movie, but no. No, the climax at movie involves some sort of psychic telecanudist duel between the two scanners. Lots of gurn in here. Mark Lionside playing pocket billiards again, by the looks of things. And you can tell it's a low-budget movie, this, because the effects, they ain't great, to be honest. Although I don't know exactly how they do that with the face, but uh, it's still a bit icky, but uh, in the same breath, it looks a bit daft and old, doesn't it? And it's obvious the budget is tight, because you can see him reusing costumes and all. There's a lot of blokes wearing flashy raincoats in this. I presume they're just recycling the same raincoat. Either that or they've got a job lot in the Greenwoods closing down sale. Okie do, on to raise ratings. Well, the premise of this film made it seem a load of cobblers, but Patrick McGoogler were in it, and uh, supposedly it's a bit of a cult classic. Cult. Cult. So, I reckon it's probably a, a two-star film. Now, I like the way it started. Thought it was quite an intriguing premise. But, yeah, it didn't really deliver. Fizzled out a nickel bit. Some of the acting were pretty wooden, a bit crap. Uh, and I felt Patrick McGoogley were criminally underused. So, yeah, I appreciate this is uh, regarded as a cult classic by many, but for me, a bit underwhelming. 
So I'm rating Scanners a two star, two star film. Here is Scanners 2, The New Order. Now, inevitably, they were sequels, weren't they? But uh, Milad Dino says that these took uh, an even bigger dip in quality. So uh, I won't waste my time with these. Hey, that bloke. Now, is it me, or does he look like former Welsh rugby legend and BBC commentator Jonathan Davies? Or is that me doing another Ron Pickering? I think, well, comment below. Am I right or wrong? I think I'm right. I think he does look like him. Maybe more so in his younger days, but uh, even so, yeah. Oh. I'm rubbing it, but now it's happening. Oh, forget it. Love! Where's that wedding present cutlery your mother got for us? Well, hope you enjoyed my review of Scanners Ravers. And if you did, poke the old like button for me. Give it a good poke. Maybe you could use your, your telekinetic powers and just go, and poke it that way, you know. Uh, just don't make me explode. Ta. Uh, and remember to share our reviews with your mates and subscribe to my channel if you ain't already a subscriber. Much appreciated. As are all the wonderful comments you ravers keep popping on there. Thank you very much indeed for those. And apologies if I don't get round to responding to them all, but thank you very much. So copyright box permitting, I will be back with another review very soon. So I will see you next time. Okie doo!